Hello, you may be curious why I'm in uniform and where I am right now. Stay tuned, you will find out more. So welcome back to the second episode of The Power of Youth. And in the unlikely situation that you're not one of the 3.84 million unique you, uh, viewers from our first episode, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Enoch from Hong Kong, China, and I'm a host from CGTN, and this is live from CGTN. So, The Power of Youth is a live roundtable show where we exchange stories, break stereotypes so that you can see more, understand better, and celebrate our differences. Previously, in the first episode, we have five very incredible guests from US, Kenya, Romania, and Tajikistan, and of course, how can we forget our AI friend, Pi, where all of you have sent us very interesting questions through the hashtag AskPi and very insightful comments to our CGTM website, mobile app, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, Douyin, WeChat, WhatsApp, uh, WeChat, WhatsApp, Weibo, Bilibili, and Yang Shiping as well. So you keep on doing what you're doing, send us comments and questions throughout the entire show, and I'll do my job to keep reminding you throughout. So in the first episode, we broke down the big topic of culture by unboxing a lot of mystery boxes, revealing different aspects of our life, uh, for example, with keywords such as OOTD, outfits of the day, talking about how we dress, taste, the way that we enjoy different food, housing, the way we live, and transportation. And one of you asked a very interesting question to our friend Pi through hashtag AskAI. If Pi can travel anywhere, where would Pi travel to? And Pi responded in the most AI fashion possible, which is to the outer space. And this is exactly where we're going. So Pi, why don't you say hello to your audience? Hello everyone, I'm Pi from Alpha Planet. I'm very excited to welcome humans to our planet for a cultural exchange, and I hope that we can become good friends. I hope we can become good friends as well. So going into Alpha Planet, introducing Earth civilization and comments is a daunting and a very big responsibility. But I have invited four friends together to come with. And this is why I'm dressed like this, because I will be their captain for this exciting journey. But there is one security check from Pi, which is we have to select the best of the best from Earth, showcasing the best diverse culture that we have. So there is this little talent that they're going to perform for us before they get on this spacecraft. So first up, I would like to invite Pi, you, to my friend, Chen Hui. Chen Hui, you're up. Hi, I'm Tian Hui from China. I'm a super fan of Chinese traditional culture. I master Sichuan opera, face changing, Peking opera, Chinese traditional dance, Chinese folk dance, and Gu Qin, and so on. Today, I brought a chapter of the Peking opera Mai Shui. Let's have a look. <laughs> Oh, 
Congratulations, you have passed the security check. Thank you. Please get your boarding pass. Okay, let's have a look. Ooh, thank you. Oh, wow, Hi. that was so impressive. <laughs> Chen Hui, welcome. Please take a seat. Sure. I know you can't tell, but Pai was super <laughs> excited with his voice. Right. I know Pai well. This is the most excited <laughs> Pai has been. Um, so congratulations. Can you tell us a little bit more about your performance? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, as you can see, I'm playing the character Hua Dan in Peking Opera. That's one of the five characters in Peking Opera. And the, like, the story I was telling is that I was playing a maid, that I want my um, master to be pleased and amused so she could be happy, and so that's what I'm doing. Well, that's a very interesting storyline. Yeah. <laughs> and, and of course, Peking Opera is a combination of, as we see, music, dancing, yeah. recitation, and, and sometimes even martial arts. Uh, can you tell us how does that reflect for you uh, the Chinese culture and what interests you to get started? Um, f because it's really beautiful, as you can see. <laughs> yeah. And I think this is also a representative of the inclusive culture of Chinese. And this is like, there, there's a lot of gestures and makeup in the Peking Opera. So I think it's really cool. That's my motivation to learn it. Absolutely. We're getting the first comment on our social media. Really? Um, so, so they're saying, you look very young. So how old are, are you? And, <laughs> and when did you start learning Peking Opera? Um, I'm 18, and actually, I just started to learn it this year. Oh, wow. And I'm such a beginner. <laughs> yeah. Wow, so this is a testimony that anyone with interest and passion can start with anything and learn, start to yes, learn anything. Yes, sure, yeah. So will you be joining our conversation in this full outfit? No, actually, I'm going to change my clothes. Oh, well, uh, <laughs> please get ready. I can't wait yeah, to sure. discuss more about Chinese culture and picking up, etc. Sure. Thank you See so you much. See you later. See you. So keep the comment coming in all of our social media platforms, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, Douyin, WeChat, Weibo, uh, Bilibili, and Yang Shiping, and of course, our CGTN website and mobile app as well. Um, so I, I'm told that we have a flight or a spacecraft to catch, um, so we're moving on to the next person. Um, so uh, I would like to introduce you. If Pai, you are excited about this, you, you'll be even more impressed very, very soon. So my next friend, Kate. Hello, my name is Kate. I come from Belarus. Although I come from Belarus, but I am a fan of different cultures and languages, and I am passionate about cross-cultural communication. Today, I would like to use this opportunity to introduce the beautiful and melodic Belarusian language through this wonderful poem. I hope you enjoy it. Jakub Kolos. Новая земля. Мой родный кут, як ты мне милый, Забыть тебе не маю силы. Мороз и солнце, день чудесный, Мой друг, тебя я вижу. А, какая радость, мой друг прелестный, Пришел сюда, увидел вместе, Пошли посмотрим на озера, Красивые синявокие, И вместе увидим this beautiful poem introduces my motherland, Belarus, and the beautiful nature of it, forests, lakes, and that's why it's called the Blue-Eyed Beautiful Country. I hope you can learn about my country a little bit more in the following discussion. Thank you. Congratulations, you have passed the security check. Please get your boarding pass. So excited. Oh, wow. Hi. Congratulations, Kate. Uh, please take Hi, a seat. Hi, Enoch. What a wonderful gift that you're bringing from Earth to the space civilization. Can you tell us a little bit more about the poem? It's very soothing. Yeah, I bet you didn't expect me coming out in this beautiful <laughs> outfit. And now I would like to share about this beautiful poem, which introduces my motherland, Belarus. Mm. And its name is New Land. It talks about the lakes, about the forests, and about pristine beauty of my culture and the kindness, the beauty of our people. 
we wonder whether there is this beautiful scenery in space. Maybe we will see very soon. <laughs> yeah, very excited for our following up discussion. Absolutely. Uh, Thanks, thank you Sino. so much, Kate. Um, so uh, next, I would like to uh, introduce you to my friend, uh, Mustafa. Mustafa, you're up next. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Mustafa. I'm from Turkey. Uh, I'm a first year student from the Department of Engineering Physics at Xinhua University. I'm doing a master in nuclear engineering and management. So that's my first year in China. Today, I will introduce to you Ankara traditional dance. I'm excited to show it to you. So let's start it. <laughs> Congratulations, you have passed the security check. Please get your boarding pass. All right. All right. Congratulations, Ooh. Mustafa. Well, Welcome to the waiting room. Hello. Beautiful. I'm so glad that dancing is not a part of the qualification to be the captain <laughs> of the aircraft. Otherwise, I would not qualify. <laughs> <laughs> I heard the name is called Ankara? Yes, Ankara. Uh, it's the capital of the Turkey. Um, it's a really traditional dance for us. Uh, founder of the Turkish Republic has a visit to Ankara, and the locals just presented that dance. Mm. And then, like in, Tur in Turkey, every wedding celebrations, you know, uh, we are dancing Ankara, you know, Ankara traditional dance. It's super famous and it's really great. Are you from Ankara? I'm not from Ankara, I'm from Kayseri, it's close to Ankara. Okay. Oh, okay, but but every different city celebrate by exactly. dancing, exactly. whether you're not from Ankara or not. Yes, exactly. Like I, I think I never seen any wedding ceremonies without Ankara traditional dance. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe okay. I, I look forward to seeing your Ankara dance on your wedding soon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is another right. time for okay. another <laughs> discussion. So thank you so much for showing us right, the dance. Well. Hopefully we get to dance a little as well. Teach yeah, you gotta teach dance. us. Yeah. Okay. Of course I can teach you. <laughs> Let's see whether we have enough time or maybe you can do that in space. Um, so, <laughs> so Pi, I hope you're impressed so far. But last but not least, I would like to welcome my friend from uh, Ethiopia, Bermet. Hi, everyone. My name is Bermet. I'm a PhD graduate from Beijing Institute of Technology. And I'm going to bring you a song called Hoya Hoye. It is sung usually during the Buhe holiday. Let's start. Metana abame to arendem in Senebe to Metana abame to arendem in Senebe to Metana abame to arendem in Senebe to Hoya Hoye, Hoya Hoye, Zimado, Chessi Chessal, Zamado, Chessi Chessal, Agafari, Idekisal, Yatin Dickis, Witche Witche, Bed in Kalga, Tegal Witche, Yatchid in Kalga, Amelenia, Yalandiso, Atastenya, ho ye shum ye, apai dar ye, ho ye shum ye, apai dar ye. Thank you. Congratulations, you have passed the security check. Yeah. Please get your boarding pass. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Ooh. Yeah. Thank you, awesome, thank man. you very much. Now I have a full cool house. I understand the song is called Ho Ya Ho Ye, and it's sung after, and in celebration of the rainy season. Is that correct? Yeah, it's sung in celebration of the, of the rainy season by boys and men only. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it sounds like there's a lot of really interesting childhood memories. Very exciting and beautiful memories, yeah. Excellent. Uh, and, and then I have a few sense of community spirit and movement in this. Yeah, during this song, the boys 
move from one neighborhood to the next neighborhood and to the next neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And the fathers usually give them bread after they sunk or they, sometimes they give them money. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that's a good motivation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but, but it's a lot of fun. So, yeah, uh, so fun. thank you so much. Um, so this is it. Uh, we have our full house. Uh, we have all our guests with us here today. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. Um, I was told <laughs> that um, we have some time before we get on to the aircraft. So, this is the waiting room. Oh, and right. we will have a little chat about some of the culture, that where we are from, why we're interested, particularly the traditional one, and how us as young people are passing on some of the traditions. So, um, so I'm getting another... It seems like a lot of people are very interested in your performance of oh, picking really? opera. <laughs> yeah, especially me. It's, it was quite impressive. Really? Um, yeah. so, um, so, so can you tell us um, maybe a little bit more about what interests you from you know, uh, learning picking opera? Is there anything that is most impressive and memorable when learning about picking opera? Yes, actually, I want to talk about the whole opera. Like, I not only like picking opera, but also Sichuan opera. Oh. I'm actually better at Sichuan opera. I think it's like... What's the difference? Um, Sichuan opera is more about face changing. It's more like magic. You suddenly change your face at a second, and the audience doesn't know how you did it. That oh. was so cool. <laughs> That's, That's, a, yeah. That's a secret. <laughs> That's a secret. That's yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, and I... When I was learning it, I was like nine, oh. and I remember it was in a burning summer, and actually I had to put on 11 layers of masks on my face, and I take it down one by one. Oh, did I just say the secret? <laughs> <laughs> is, is, is there a video of, of you doing this yes. opera? Yes, I sent a video to Pi. Yeah, oh, Pi, can, can you play us the We're video? We're so excited. Yes. I just tried to search through. Oh, oh. there we oh. go. Oh. All right. Oh so that's God. the first one. The first yeah. One. Oh, wow. 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 That's, that's you, not very fast. That's this that's is so cool. Bad. This is magical. You like it? Actually, yeah. I, I know that in Chinese, this is called Bian Lian, right? Yes. Oh. Change the mask. Yeah. But I have to be honest with you, I'm a big fan of Pekin Opera. Oh. And I, I remember my first time coming to China, to Beijing, and seeing it with my own eyes as mm -hmm. a high school student. Although I didn't understand much of the Chinese, but I really enjoyed the culture and this unique, beautiful culture through this yeah. beautiful art. So I really would like to ask you to teach me some basic movements and steps, if it's possible. Sure. What about the great greeting like gesture? So your left hand is doing this. This is called feng tou quan. It's because the shape of it is more like a phoenix, oh, the head yeah. of a phoenix. All right. So you do it like this, like this. This. Okay, let's make it easier. So first you do this, <laughs> okay. yes. and you do this. Oh. Oh. Yeah. And this does look like a phoenix upper. with some imagination. <laughs> 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 with some imagination, yeah. yeah. Yes. So this yeah. is saying hi. No, you have another hand doing <laughs> this. Okay. Like this. Yeah, your fingertip is here. Yeah, so oh. this is more for female. Okay. Like this is for female characters. All right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, this is already very complicated. And this is just the basic <laughs> the, reading. The, there's Wait. a simpler version yes. in greetings called gong shou li. Yeah. Right? It's which is which is where female with the left hand, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, with a sort of an empty fist, right? And where you cover it like this. But yeah. where for male, it's different. <laughs> so it's with an actual fist. Uh -huh. And a uh, hand. Oh, like, I, you know, know, yeah, I remember yes, this. Yes, yes, yes. right? <laughs> so, so it's a traditional way of greeting, but it's also to do with um, the Confucius value and also yin and yang as well. Yeah. Oh. And obviously, um, when, when, when it's combined, it's almost like a balance, right? right? And, and harmony. Yeah. Harmony is obviously a very, very important value of Chinese culture. Oh, yeah, for um, sure. As well, to, towards it. Um, and, and this is something that started, I think, thousands of years ago in the Western Zhou dynasty. Yeah. So it's, it's been passed on throughout thousands and thousands of years. Yeah, that's very impressive. Yeah. How did you get interested in this? My grandparents were really interested in the traditional opera, and I was watching that things when I was young. Uh -huh. So I just 
naturally get into it. Yeah, it, I think um, opera thing is in every Chinese people's blood. Everyone wow. love it. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah. So, so I, I'm hearing that we got another. Co today is great. There's so many different comments coming in because I think it's exciting sharing about different culture. So, uh, one person asked online if. Pi, <laughs> were to learn an intangible cultural heritage skills, what would you choose? Pi, what would be your answer? There are so many intangible cultural heritage skills that I want to learn. For example, textile weaving in Peru, the ancient technique of creating textiles by hand, often using natural materials like wool, cotton, and alpaca. Traditional music in Ireland, a rich and vibrant tradition of folk music characterized by instruments such as the fiddle bodrin and yuling pipes. Brazilian capoeira, a martial art that combines dance, acrobatics, and music. Chinese paper cutting, a traditional art form of cutting paper into intricate designs and shapes, often used for decoration during festivals and special occasions. And Turkish coffee, a traditional method of preparing and serving coffee. It is a symbol of hospitality and socialization in Turkish culture. <laughs> it seems like I want you to introduce <laughs> Turkish yes, exactly, culture. Exactly, Turkish exactly. Coffee. I agree with the pie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need your evidence. Always right. yeah, yeah. The evidence from so, a Turkish guest. <laughs> so um, the Turkish coffee is really popular, and it's the traditional drinks for us. It's really important. It is kind of symbol of hospitality. Uh -huh. So like in Turkey, when we gather or in daily life, um, we always drink coffee, like Turkish coffee. Yeah. It's so interesting. So and also um, we are preparing to Turkish coffee using a special pot we call it cezve. Oh. Yes. Just Here, I think. This, right? Yes. I can just show it to you. Oh. It's the special pot. So we are heating, heating up here. So basically, we call it cezve. Also, I want to show to you the Turkish, Turkish coffee. Yeah. I think like everyone the See. power of you have now the brand. <laughs> 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 but but let, let me tell you something. If anyone see that color, they will understand that this is the original Turkish coffee. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> yes, yes. And also, we have um, Turkish tea. Yep. It's also really uh, popular. Also, like I would like to show to you a special glass that oh. is really important for um, Turkish people. You know, like there is a curve here, as you've seen. So, why like we using this kind of glass? Because we really want to see the color of the tea. Mm. So that's really important for us. So that's why we're using um, this kind of shaped um, glasses. So um, I think like one of two, uh, one of the biggest aim of to like drinking Turkish tea or Turkish coffee is that we are gathering together and you know like we are closing each other. So that's why these kind of traditional things uh, make it better to, you know, talking, you know, we are, we are remembering each other. So that's why these kind of things is really critical for Turkish culture. I'm a very coffee person and Turkish <laughs> coffee is very strong, right? Exactly. It is super strong. And also we are serving to Turkish coffee with uh, a glass of water. That's really important. Also, we have some kind of cookies and also we have... Turkish delivery, we call it lokum. I would like to show it to you like that. Oh, amazing. Yeah, it's coated by powdered sugar. Uh, it's, made it, uh, it's made it of um, water, sugar, corn. So, and also like we are serving with the coffee or tea, it doesn't matter. So always uh, we are drinking tea or coffee with some, you know, like sweet things. Mm -hmm. That's really yeah. important for us. What? So the most important question, tea or coffee? Yeah. Oh, oh my God, <laughs> that's a really tough question for me. <laughs> so, so let me ask maybe Bermat's an easier question, tea or coffee? Oh, I, I like tea more than coffee, but oh. my country mates love coffee I a lot. I would have been easy answer because <laughs> Ethiopia is famous for the coffee. Yeah, yeah, but I love tea. But sorry, Great. sorry that. <laughs> Can you tell us more about Ethiopian coffee? Ethiopian coffee is basically known as Abyssinian coffee. It's one of the best coffees in the world. And according to our history, coffee started growing in Ethiopia and migrated to the rest of the world. And we use a traditional kind of cups and pots to make it. This here in front of me is a modern version. Mm. You can see the pot. It's a 
similar to the traditional version, but the traditional version has some other elegance. It's black and it has some carving in it, but this one is the modernized version. And the drawings that you see here is ancient Ethiopian drawings, and this is the modernized version. So usually people in our, my country gather around neighborhood. So if one neighbor makes coffee, they call the surrounding neighbor and they gather there and talk about their life and solve problems. Even people who have, have conflicts can solve their problems in oh. drinking coffee. So the great thing is we have pie. So yeah. pie told me that there is a traditional version photo as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so that we can show our audience what it looks like. Oh, yeah, oh, this is the traditional version. It's very different, but yet it's very different. In its but color the, the color is somewhat different. Uh, yeah. Oh. It's, it's very interesting. Although Belarus is not a famous country for producing tea or coffee, mm -hmm. but I have to say that we are real tea lovers. Whenever oh. guests come to our house, we always have few teapots prepared at home, and we always serve it with cakes, with sweets. Us as Turkish people enjoy eating a lot of desserts. They're very yes. sweet yes. and often homemade. So I think that in this way, tea and coffee can actually unite us together and connect yeah, us together. Exactly. Yes. And a great sign of this friendship and connection of people from all over the world is the International Tea Day, which was introduced by UNESCO with the big help of China. And I was very lucky to participate in the International Tea Festival in oh. Yunnan and to try both Chinese, uh, Sri Lanka, other countries' teas, and to enjoy their beauty. And although I don't come from this country, I can from a country which is famous for tea, but I can still enjoy its taste, its beauty, by learning about these traditions and drinking tea together. Absolutely. And of course, in the end of 2022, it's an important you know, time for both Turkey and China and Azerbaijan, where the tea culture has been recognized by UNESCO as one of the intangible culture. Oh, true, so I understand there's Chinese tea that we have yeah. also. Actually, I brought some Chinese tea today. And what I prepared is green tea. And there are a lot of more type of tea in China. For example, we have green tea, black tea, dark tea, floral tea, and fruit tea. Um, why, the reason why I brought green tea here today, I think it is quite different from tea from other countries. Because green tea is like more um, bitter, it has a richer taste. I think um, the rest of the countries might love black tea. Yeah. Yes. yes. That's why I broke the black tea. Yes. <laughs> oh, we, we call the black tea red tea, actually, in my country. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? Just like in yeah. China, hong cha. Yeah. Hong, hong cha. cha. Is, oh, okay. It's red tea. tea, but I think translating it to English, it's Black tea. black tea, yeah. Oh. And Probably. we can actually taste some of the tea. Right? Yeah, yes, yeah. sure. great idea. Okay. Um, before we taste it, there is actually another tool that is really special. This is called Gong Dao Bei. Mm. So in a formal occasion, when people gather around, this is like the justice cup. So uh -huh. if you just directly pour the tea to each cup, the, each taster might feel like one is stronger and why it's lighter. So if you mix it in the justice cup. Okay. And you shake it a little bit. Okay. Wow, and great. And it's so interesting how in China they use this kind of small cups. In exactly. Turkey they use yes. also a small cup but completely different shape. The shape, yeah. The shape you can is see so the different. color, right? So what is the yes. right color? Oh, you, yeah. Let me show it to you. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Beautiful. Turning the red, right? Yeah, yeah it's, it's very, kind of red. It looks very, it looks kind of uh, very yes. strong. Yes. Very beautiful. So, this is definitely oh, not green. Thank you. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, beautiful. You can have a I love this beautiful okay. color. Okay. How do, is there a way to drink it or? It's a bit mm. hot, just be careful. So, what does it taste like? How do you like it? So, so you're more the impartial one because there's coffee, there's tea, there's tea. I like and the bitterness. You like yeah. the bitterness. The bitterness. I like that it's quite Actually, fresh, very refreshing yes. and great for summer, I would yeah. say. Exactly. Actually, a little secret, when you take a bite of a super sweet snack and then you drink a sip of the warm green tea, you will feel a wonderful taste in your mouth. Yeah, yeah. And it's the aftertaste. So yeah. you drink a little and sip, that, yeah, then you enjoy it, it. Yes. And, and then you feel the aftertaste. And I think what I've learned while drinking Chinese tea is you have to take it easy and slowly, step mm. by step. Yes. So very slowly to enjoy it. First, you enjoy its 
immediate taste, then a few seconds the aftertaste, and then you take another sip, right? Yeah. Uh, is this correct, <laughs> Tianhui? Correct me you if know, I'm wrong. You know a lot about There's tea an culture. Expert, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you are an expert. <laughs> but in construct, in Turkey, we're really drinking the tea really fast. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. This, yeah, yeah, exactly. This is the difference. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like, you know, like we are communicating with your relatives, with your family, with your friends. Mm -hmm. You're drinking, you keep drinking the tea. Oh. <laughs> so that's why we are, we are drinking really quick. Yeah, so there's differences, right? But yeah. it's, it's very interesting. So, for example, in Belarus and in Turkey, I know that we like to put a lot of sugar, mint, yes. uh, mint leaves, mm. and sometimes lemon. But for Chinese tea, is this the same, Tianhui? I wonder. Um, because there is a word in Chinese called xian ku hou tian, bitter first and sweet after. Mm. So we taste the bitterness first, and when you like taste it in your mouth, you will feel a little bit sweet. Mm. And that is also the symbol of Chinese like spirit. Oh. Yeah, right. So, oh. so usually you don't add anything. You just drink tea straight away without lemon or sugar because that would be considered a little bit foreign way of drinking it, right? Yeah, but we do have some innovation uh -huh. today. We do have milk tea, yeah. like uh, a lot of yeah. young yeah, boba. people. Yeah, yeah, young, boba tea young young <laughs> Especially in my country, we, there are people who love to drink coffee with salt. Mm. And salt. Oh. With salt, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Most Especially the old, the, 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 the taste, when you put salt in the coffee, the real taste of coffee comes out. Oh. Ah. So, for example, when you put salt in food, it springs out the real taste, yep. right? Those the flavor. The yep. flavor, the real flavor. Those people who are experienced in older generation usually drink coffee with salt. Wow, oh. very cool. I love this discussion, how the same beverage, but yet very, very different, different across guy. different yeah. cultures as well. But I also realized, Kate, you're wearing something very special. Yeah, so yeah. today I wear this outfit with a purpose to introduce... Do you dress like this every day? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I wish I had that occasion. But I'm very happy that I have the occasion to mm. wear it today. Because today, as a representative and a very proud youth from Belarus, I would like to tell you a little bit of about our culture and about our traditional arts through this outfit. So you can see it's a very long dress. And can you guess what material is it made of? Have cotton, you ever seen cotton. Right? Cotton? Oh, cotton? It's not cotton, it's called flex, oh. which, flex. Is spe which is actually a national color, like okay. a gobao, a national oh. a color, Treasure. national flower yep. of our country, right? Okay. So in China they have mu dan hua and yeah. peony, and we have flex. So why is it made of this? Because in winter it warms you up. And in summer, when our ancestors and when our people used to work in the field, it would keep them cold. So it's a very natural material, breathing your skin and your letting your body and the skin breathe. So this yeah. is the first very unique uh, material. It's called flex. Then you can see these different patterns on my outfit. And they are made with a special technology. I prepared some pictures for you. And this is a very special type of embroidery that is used. And uh, it's a very long process that is a handicraft. And it's also considered to be the intangible cultural heritage of Belarus. Uh, you might wonder, what do these patterns mean? Yeah. Usually, what? they are related to the harvest, flowers, oh. harvest. to the sun, and to the moon. As you know, all of the ancestors, people from many different ethnicities, used to think about the events in their life connected to the supernatural powers, to the yeah. superpowers of nature. That's why there are these beautiful, mainly red patterns. So this color is white, and our country, uh, Belarus, actually means... Uh, clean, white, pure, pure, yeah. right? So right. that actually represents our beautiful, pristine nature. It's very much just like the poem that you recite. Exactly. Right? This can be seen in uh, a lot of elements of our culture. Oh. Poetry, embroidery, um, all of, for example, uh, can you also see this beautiful hat accessory? Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, it's also a very special technique, and uh, we produce this straw hat accessories and straw dolls that are mm. made in the figures of humans or animals. Mm. Uh, that, and you can also see a lot of these patterns on these dolls. So this is another beautiful um, art, a beautiful handicraft. Also, you can see this belt. Mm. It uses similar patterns, and it's also one of the intangible cultural heritage of Belarus, made with special technique, and it's 100% handmade. So if there is one day when you visit our country, whenever you go, 
you will see these souvenirs and you will see these uh, belts in the museums, galleries. And as soon as you go to Belarus, you have to buy this. Otherwise, it, does, it means that you haven't been to our country. Wow. <laughs> so everyone wow. usually buys this, straw products and usually straw dolls, as well mm -hmm. as these beautiful belts. And for men, you can actually pick this beautiful shirt which is okay. made with similar patterns. Oh. Uh, and this can be found anywhere in Belarus. So if you end up being in Minsk or other beautiful cities of my country, let me know and I will take you on a beautiful tour to introduce you to the, our beautiful world of embroidery and other arts and crafts. And of course, now we also know the story behind and, and what it represents as well. And, and Pai just told me that um, it got in some of the pictures that yes. uh, you were describing. Exactly. Oh. So this is how wow. we produce these belts, you see, and the embroidery is also produced in this way. So you see all these patterns, belts, and other accessories are produced with this special technique. Excellent. That, that's very, very, very interesting. interesting. Really amazing. Beautiful. There are actually Beautiful. Um, similar handicrafts in China, too, in the like um, East, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's quite similar, and they use the wooden machines, like using the strings. And they also usually use in the hands, right? For example, yeah. for Chinese knot, like yeah. Zhongguo Jie. Oh. I yeah. think it also uses a very similar yes, pattern. Yes. Or when you see these beautiful national minorities' clothes and their bags. Yeah. Whenever you go traveling around China, for example, Yunnan mm. or Guangxi, yeah, you, there you have so many ethnical minorities and they produce their little bags or yeah. clothes with these patterns. Yes. And I see that the technology is very similar. What about you, yes, Bennett? What about the clothes yeah. on you? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted it's to ask It's actually a similar, similar kind of uh, story. These colors represent the country's flag, actually, it's green, yellow, and red are the country's flag. And they make it like a zigzag kind of thing because it shows the interconnection and relation of the people in the, in, the, in the country. And normally, this is what people wear, young men and also older men, during the Hoya Hoya season, the Buhay oh. season. And they yeah, wear like white, the song, yeah. yeah, they wear yeah, white. Yeah. Uh, thing like this and also white trousers and they celebrate together uh -huh. and some of the men also wear a hat similar kind of hat. I can already picture this this happy moment happy <laughs> moment <laughs> kids it's a really happy moment for kids especially boys and uh, yeah teenagers so, mm. so it's great to see there's so many different culture but yet you know around people around nature is just the essence of this and and I'm already getting uh, some questions so um, people cannot People are memorized by the uh, mass changing really? video. Uh, yes, <laughs> we got a couple of comments. Um, mm -hmm. we, we might get you on to, to you know, uh, reveal the secret to us, maybe, oh. if, if we are nice to you, maybe. Um, but, but I also get another question, very interesting question, because we spoke about intangible culture. Mm -hmm. So one of the person asked, what are some of the effective way to better protect cultural traditions while also promoting cultural exchange between different countries. So Pai, what do you think? Sometimes, protecting one's own culture and learning about other cultures can appear to be contradictory. This is because protecting one's own culture often requires an emphasis on cultural identity and uniqueness, while learning about other cultures requires an open-minded attitude and the ability to accept different cultures. How do you think of this? Hmm. So recently, I've been to Istanbul. Yes. And I'm struck by the mix of culture, exactly, right? Exactly. There, there's a temple, there's a mosque, mosque and then there's a church. church. Yep, in, yep, yep. So, so I, I wonder, from, from the comment what Pai mentioned, what do you think? Um, how, do you, how do people in Istanbul, in Turkey, okay. Turkey eh, protect the culture? Wow, there's so much exchange going on too. Exactly, exactly. In Istanbul, like, as, as you mentioned, like, there are church, mosque, like other religion places. So people are... Uh, living together yeah. and every foreigner especially like they they do love living in Istanbul because it is you know cultural exchange cultural heritage um, that's why it's um, living in Istanbul is um, is awesome but on the other hand um, we need to protect our traditions you know our customs you know and especially young generation I want to talk about young generation you know like uh, in young generation is connected to the social media, you know, they following the news. So they may try, they may lose the traditions, the customs. I think the older generation, the older people, you know, uh, they need to push them. They need to remind our foods, our traditions. 
especially um, Turkish government also, they, they have already realized that, and they pushing to public, you know, uh, to remind, to remind our cultures, our traditions, especially in Turkey, uh, in high schools, especially in, um, in special days. There are lots of organizations, cultural activities. So the schools are, um, you know, like encourage the students to attend these kind of activities. Because, of course, like cultural exchange, it's really important and it's really great to, uh, to get the perspective to, you know, like looking at the situations or the problems from different views. But on the other hand, we need to protect our cultures as well. So that's why I think in, in Turkey, um, like older generation, older people should push the younger generation mm. a bit, a little bit. It's a very tricky balance. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to now promote Turkish culture. Okay. I'm the last, trust me, I'm the last person to ask you to teach me how to dance. But, <gasps> oh, okay. <laughs> but I, I was memorized. Also, there's comments coming in talking about the dancers. It's, it's light, but it's, it have this positive vibe towards okay. it. So can you teach us some moves? Very simple moves, okay. because bear in mind, I'm not very good at dancing. But <laughs> yeah, that'd be so cool. It would be so That's cool, right? Activity. Okay, okay. You feel like I can teach you now halai? Halai, okay. Halai. Uh, halai first, will, like let me give a short explanation. What's okay. halai? So in halai, like um, it is uh, like um, we are just creating a, a half circle. Mm -hmm. You know, the meaning of the halai uh, in Turkey, we are getting closer to each other. Oh. It is the symbol of togetherness. You know, so that's why in our tradition, halai is really important. So we can try if you want. Okay. Now, are yes. you ready? Yes. yes. Why not? Let's go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so. I will try to explain as much as simple, okay? <laughs> okay. So, uh, there, by the way, there are many types of halai oh. dance in Turkey, so I will just show one of them. Mm -hmm. So we will use our fingers, okay? okay. We need to connect to each other. Okay. But in some province, some states... Little finger, yes, right? Yes, linger. Okay. Little one. Some states, they, sometimes they're holding their shoulders. Okay. But we will use our fingers. I think okay. that's better. Okay. 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 So, like, first of all, we will go to the right side. Okay. Yeah. I will just count. One, one, two, two, three. And then left side. One, <laughs> two, three. One more. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, one, two, one, 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 one. That's it. Oh, that's cool. easy. That's that's yeah. really good. Yeah. Did you like it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's fun, but easy. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do that. Okay, okay. okay. One, okay. two, three. Let's go. One, one two, two, three. three. Wow, this is fun. One, two, three. three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. Woo! That's great, guys. Wow. <laughs> that, that, that's my dance of today. So. Oh. <laughs> thank, thank you so much for introducing. Right, so, right. so it's dance in wedding, right? Uh, in wedding, in celebrations, you know, it is really common in every city in Turkey. So I think in, in all the wedding ceremonies, celebrations, you know, we are doing halai. That's really important for our culture, you know. And it's really fun, right? Yeah. You halai, know, what, what does it stand for? Halai, what? Halai. Yeah, halai. What, 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 what does, does it mean? mean? Oh, what does it mean? Halai is, um, it is kind of, um, it is the symbol, symbol of the togetherness. Ah, oh, so, unity, togetherness. Yeah, unity, exactly, exactly. So, like, with halai, as you said, like, we are connecting each other. Oh. We are getting closer. Yeah. So, I think that's the aim of the halai. So, in the celebration, in the weddings, yeah. so we are doing halai, that, like, the aim of the halai, we are getting closer. So, that's why... In Turkish traditions, you know, the halai is really important and critical. Excellent. You know, this is actually pretty similar to the Chinese Tibet dance. Um, it's like a minority nationality of chi China, and people do the same circle thing, and we hold each other's hand and doing one, two, one, two. And this is super happy on a ceremony, and people, uh, there might be a fire like in the middle of the circle and people dance around it. Oh. It's, it's very it's striking because it's <laughs> the same in my culture. And it's there called is something oh. similar. Oh. It's called karawot. <laughs> when we walk in circles, we dance. Yeah. And this is usually also made around the fire. And the men 
the young males would jump over the fire. Wow. And the, yes, and the girls would still dance oh. for different traditional holidays. And it's so interesting to see how different cultures are actually the same and there are yeah. much more common things yes. between this culture rather than uh, things that tell us apart. That yeah, makes connection between our culture. Right? Yeah. yeah. The Hoya Hoye festival that I told you about, in the night time, the boys will hold this chubo, this is a bunch of sticks, oh. sticks yeah. and they burn it. And oh. they run around the oh. fire and sing the Hoya <laughs> Hoya. The same. Similar to what yeah. you said. Similar. Almost similar. Similar. Togetherness. Mm. This uh, is the really global this. village, right? Yes, that it's we'll live in. Yeah. <laughs> and it has always been. It's just we just recently find out about so many similarities. They have so many right? common. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And Senghui, besides uh, Tibetan dance, I also yeah. know that you have learned a lot of different dances from different ethnic oh. minorities, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, folk dance. Yeah. Yeah, folk dances from, I think, from the ethnic minority of Uyghurs. Mongols as well as Koreans. Yes, right? because there are um, 56 minority nationalities in China, and they're, they all have their like um, special dance. They have different type of dance, and they are. If you you want to say there's a like same thing in them is that they make a connection between people. People dances for celebration, and they dance for communication. Yes, I think it's pretty cool to learn different kinds of dance. Yeah, I love dancing. And, and, and congratulations as well. Talk about communication. Languages, I know you're you know, a language expert. I'm, a, I'm not an expert, Enoch, but I'm a fan. You can say that I'm a real fan. <laughs> because I was born You've in a family. You've been very humble. <laughs> <laughs> Learning it from you, Enoch. Actually, I've been born in a family. I was very lucky to be born in a family where we speak a lot of languages. We speak mm -hmm. Russian, Spanish, English, and then later wow. I started learning Chinese wow. in middle school. So I'm very lucky to be part of this cross-cultural communication from a very young age. Mm. Uh, and as I grow older, I actually actually realize the importance of it. A lot is being said right now about cross-cultural communication, having an open mind, being open to new cultures. But what does it really mean and why is it important? These are the questions that we should ask ourselves and what I did and I found answers um, while I had these experiences, particularly in China. So as a student here, mm -hmm. uh, where I studied for four years of undergrad was Tsinghua University, we had a lot of opportunities to learn about different cultures, such as International Culture Festival. It's an annual event where we invite students from uh, all universities from Beijing, from different countries. If I'm not mistaken, over 100 countries representative come to our beautiful campus oh, wow. and show their cuisines, yep. their national outfits, their dancing, their singing. So we, you can just come to this little tent, open, uh, this uh, door with this key and find out a new mysterious world. Wow. And this is how you become interested in other cultures. This is how your interest towards other cultures, other civilizations, and other languages is being born. Another example is when uh, in the student dorm where I lived for a few years, we had this weekly events during weekends where I would cook something from Russian or Belarusian cuisine. Our friends from Africa, South and North America, Southeast Asia, and other regions of the world cook their things. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be a drink or a dish, right? For example, beautiful, I really like Thai milk tea or Chinese very famous duck, right? Or gong bao qi din, Chinese oh, style chicken. Yeah. Yeah. And then when we enjoy this food, it seems very simple. Just what's so special about eating the food, about tasting each other's food. But then you realize that there are so many things behind these recipes, behind the cooking. And through this way, through talking to your friends, from different backgrounds, you understand their culture, their language, their cooking, their traditions. And this is how you really train and practice to have an open mind and open and brave heart. Oh. This, why is this important? Because, well, now you know that we live in the times of incredible turmoil, turbulence all over the world. And this is so important to build connection, to build understanding, to build the, sh the shared future for the mankind. And mm. this is what I think people-to-people -people exchanges are really are about. This is what public diplomacy is really about. Yeah. And I think this is very important. And I don't this, know if you have other ideas about And, and this stuff from us being friends, right? And, and just like Pai mentioned at the very beginning, hope that we can be friends. So I'm curious, we're all from different backgrounds. Yeah. We have prepared a board for us all. Yay. Um, maybe I'm interested to know how to write maybe friends, in, mm -hmm. in, in our own language. Yeah. What, what would that look like? Okay. Mm. 
So I'm going to do the English version, which is the easiest, right? So we're going to hold it right to the camera. Yes. Not the best handwriting, but um, <laughs> so we hope we can be friends. Oh. Our friends from Alpha Planet. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Oops. Right. So maybe we can go one by one just to pronounce it. So maybe starting from okay. you, Tian Hui. Sure. So this is Peng Yao, um, friends. Yeah. And you can see um, there are two yue. This is like moon in, oh. in the first character. And this is yo is friend. Yeah, this is peng yo. Nice. Mm. It's named Guadagninet. What language Gua is it in? It is Amharic. Amharic. In Amharic language, we have 33 consonants and seven vowels. And this means gua Guadagninet. It means friendship. And this language is actually derived from Hebrews, mm. the same family, Semitic family. You were telling me this very interesting story about friends. Can, can, can you tell us what is it about? Yeah, there, in ancient times, it is told that there were three uh, wild oxes. And they usually protect each other in the nighttime from wild animals. Mm -hmm. So these three wild oxes have different colors. One was white, the other was black, and the other one is brown color. So in the night time, when a wild animal comes, they usually form a triangular kind of shape and protect each other. And they lived like this for a long time. And after a while, one of the ox told the, the black ox told the brown ox that, you know why always wild animals find us in the night? And I don't know, said the other one. And he said, it is because one of our friend is white. In the night, they can watch him, they can find him. So they decided to leave the white wild ox. And the white wild ox was eaten by wild animals. Oh. And when another wild animal came to eat the two ones, the two wild oxes, they tried to protect each other, but they could not protect each other because they have already lost their friends. Oh, no. So this means it shows us that whatever kind of bad or good thing we have in our friend, you protect each other, you help each other as much as you can. Oh, very interesting lessons to learn. Okay, it's I write um, friends, yeah. um, arkadaşlar, it's the pronunciation. Also, you know, we can use friendship for arkadaşlık. So I have a story I want to mention. It's that. similar as well. -ish. Yes, yeah. yes, it's similar. Um, uh, in Before the Ottoman Empire, in ancient Turks, uh, you know, like, uh, they, they used to shot um, arrows, arrows, oh, okay. and but uh, in order to control, in order to control yeah. their back, yeah. you know, like uh, they were, uh, they were just, uh, they were taking the, they were just holding to a stone in your their behind, mm. or they were just going to tree because they were trusting them, mm. so they were calling it um, back stone. So basically, you know, like they were calling the friend as a back stone. And many years later, it changed as a friend. So that's the history of the friend. It's a little similar and in the story. Similar, protecting yeah. each other, watching each yes, other's back. Exactly, right? exactly. Yeah. You know, like you are trusting that person or you are, you are trusting something. Yeah. Like in ancient Turks, they were trusting the trees yeah. or the stones, you know, like in order to control if any attacks coming from like behind of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. The trust is very, very important yeah. part of friendship. Yeah. Do you have a lighter story? Because it's, it's very heavy so far, all the stories. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, I can. Um, we have a really important figure. We call it Nasreddin Hoca. Yeah. So, you know, he's a hero for, um, for the short stories. Let me just quick uh, give you some example. Once, once a time, um, Nasreddin Hoca uh, wants to get a huge cup a uh, huge pot yep. uh, from his neighborhood, his friend. And then he's just going to his um, friend's house, and then he say, I need a huge pot. Mm -hmm. And then he's getting, and then he's coming back home. A couple of days later, he's just uh, going back to neighborhood's house, and then he say, hey, hey, um, um, there is a two pot here. Mm -hmm. And then the, the neighborhood said, what is that, Hoja? What happened? Mm -hmm. And he said that, like, the pot gave birth. And then 
And then he say, okay, that's okay. The neighbor is, is taking. But another day, the hoja is going a again. And he say, I need a pot, huge, huge pot. And then uh, the, the friend say, okay, I can give it to you. Because he thinks that yeah. another time he will take more. Yeah. And then the hoja is just a couple of the days later, hoja is not bringing the cup, the huge cup, you know, pot. And then neighbor, he's curious about it. And then he's going to the hoja's house. And then he say, Hoja, Hoja, where are my pot? <laughs> the Hoja said, it's died. And then uh, the, the man said, how it's possible, Hoja, how it's died? And then the Hoja said, you are believing that it gave a birth. How you don't believe that it is dying? <laughs> so it's a really, you know, meaningful message oh uh, for the Nasrettin Hoja because um, the friendship is really important. So, you know, like we need to, you know, we need to, uh, pay attention to that. Yeah. In that example, the neighborhood, even though they, have, uh, they are a neighborhood, you know, like the Nasetinoja is just making a joke, you know, but he's not saying, he's not rejecting it. He's not asking any question. He's directly accepting. But and then the dead guy loses, you know, his equipment. And then, you know, he's arguing, he's discussing. So, and then, like, in this, uh, when we look at this kind of things, we can understand the importance of the neighborhood, importance of the French. Mm. Just like culture, right? Yes. Stories like this pass on generations after generations after generations. It's Last but not least, Belarusian. So my word is Sabri. I know that for some of the Chinese friends, it's really hard to pronounce right? And for a lot of Chinese friends, it's a little bit hard to pronounce this. But while I was listening to these stories and everyone introducing their language, this word in their languages, while also listening to Bennett and to Mustafa sharing the stories about friendship, this thought came to my mind. And it's a very famous Chinese Confucian wisdom. So I think that most of you have heard of it. It says, oh. So Tianhui, maybe you can, you can explain this meaning and elaborate a little bit so that our foreign guests understand it better. Yeah, there is a friend coming from, from afar. really far away. And we are so happy about this. Yeah, yeah mm. that's it. And there are a lot of, um, this is like, um, this is Confucius' word. Classic. You, you know, you know Confucius. Yeah, and we yeah. know. Yeah, um, he's the teacher of every Chinese people. And if you, as long as you learn Chinese, he will be your teacher too. <laughs> exactly. It's exactly. so much about inclusive and right? welcoming and hospitality. Though, yeah, yes. And although this is a very old, ancient wisdom, but it's so applicable to our life in many ways. So us here, sitting here us sitting here coming from afar from different continents yeah. different cultures but also sharing the happiness and welcoming each other yeah. i think that's a new interpretation of this old classic so i just gotten another comment on our social media platform very interesting comments thank you so much uh so they asked so some of you me and tenghui been in china forever yeah <laughs> <laughs> but uh, three of our friends we just met i'm not gonna butcher the word that you guys have made but how will you describe Chinese culture mm. to our audience, which might not have ever been to China? Um, so is there some interesting story that come with as well? So Kate, why do you go first? Mm, let me think. I would say inclusive, Inclusive. inclusiveness, because Chinese culture and uh, Chinese people's mindset is all about uh, being proud of their own culture, so-called xin being very confident Confidence. in your own culture and your own roots, but at the same time being open and respecting other civilizations, other cultures, other ideologies. Mm. And this is what I've learned as a foreign student here for many years, um, as is the hospitality, the open mind, and the inclusiveness of Chinese people, and then being able and being now, I have a lot of friends and teachers who always ask me about learning Russian, about going to our countries for traveling, and the same is for people from different cultures. You see that there is a lot of respect and a lot of equality mm. in, and uh, equal atti attitude mm. towards other cultures and civilizations. So it's mutual learning right? um, yeah. between different cultures, but also within as well, like you, learning so many different <laughs> dances from <laughs> ethnic groups, etc. as well. And we see so many ethnic minorities, right? Yeah. And they're also, also so inclusive yeah. to each other. And this mutual learning, I would guess, help to pass on civilizations and different cultures. Right, this is the key and the essence of Chinese civilization, why it's been able to strive mm. and to uh, live for such a long time. I think this is one of the keys. 
as a Chinese, I'm so proud. <laughs> <laughs> Mustafa, right. what, what, what word describe it to you? A variety. Variety. Oh, wow, yeah, so, yeah. for sure. So in China, uh, you know, like Eastern culture and Western culture coexist. So you can learn different cultures, you know, like in China. So I think um, also China has really wide cultures, wide traditions, you know. There are lots of foods, drinks mm. in China. Also, uh, you know, like, as you know, cultural heritage is a powerful source for creativity and innovation. And I see that, that creativity and innovation in China. Also, I have a story. It's a small story. Yep. Um, I have a Turkish friend. He's been living in China. And he, he got married with a Chinese girl. Okay. Uh. So I went to Xintai, Hebei province. So in there, I attended the wedding ceremony. Okay. So I saw different kind of things. And also... Did they dance uh, Halle? <laughs> <laughs> I wish we could. <laughs> so in, in there, the local... The Chinese, they were too kind to me. Mm -hmm. They were really polite. And on the other hand, we tried some food. I tried hot pot, mm -hmm. mm. by the way, but not spicy. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like the spicy one? Uh, no, I mean, I haven't got used to eat spicy one. I really, I really like spicy <laughs> yeah. food. But in China, as well as I've seen, like, all Chinese people love spicy food, right? Mm. Most of love. us, Most. yeah. So A lot of them, yeah. In conclusion, yeah, in, in China, there are lots of opportunities for the foreigners. If you come here, you can learn different kind of cultures. You can meet different kind of uh, people, and you can develop your perspective. Yeah. Mm. And this is the essence of your Peng. Yeah, and it's so interesting because uh, you mentioned diversity, variety. And for example, when I attended a traditional wedding of the minority Yao in Yunnan, and yep. then I went to a wedding in the north of China, in Dombei province, this was like me going to two other countries. You know, when people, they speak different dialects. Sometimes yeah. if you come from the south and you yeah. go to the north, people cannot really understand each other yes. because these dialects can be so complex. Yeah. And then you can also see, for example, the outfits, the traditional wearing. It's also so different. It seems like these people come from different countries. But this is, again, the diversity yes. and the unity of a Chinese nation that we can yep. see within one nation, right. within one country. Yep. Yep. And, and it is so complex, but yet um, it is because what we share in common that bring us yeah, together, exactly. which is very, very yeah. important as yeah. one nation. Mm. Bermet, for you, what's the word and any story? Yeah, for me, it's... Spicy food. <laughs> <laughs> Spicy food is a, a better word, but I couldn't find a word that can describe it, that I can say it. I see lots of, uh, I think, all of the world is now, we see lots of modernization mm. in China. But that is being done in a very traditional way also. So there's a contrast of modern China as well as a traditional China. For example, I love buildings. I see this, the Chinese traditional rooftops uh -huh. with the modernized exactly. buildings. So this kind of building. And also you can see several kind of universities try to keep their Chinese traditional culture, mm -hmm. but also advancing into different technologies, AI, modern kind of innovations. So this mixture of tradition and also being modernized, that's what I usually understand about Chinese, and I yeah. appreciate a lot about it. And of course, in the capital of Beijing, this is very, very clear and obvious, right? You have the yeah. forbidden city, of course, yeah. Yeah. but then you have the skyscrapers as yeah, yeah. well for, yeah. for the city too. Yeah, yeah. Excellent, great. For Chen Hui, after hearing so many different words, keywords, how do you feel? Yeah. Like, is there anything that stands out for you? If you were to introduce Chinese culture, let's say to a foreign friend, is there any aspect you will highlight? Yes, of course. As Kate mentioned, there is a lot of different um, culture um, from different parts of China. The south and the north and the west and east, they are really, really different. So that's why I'm still learning and there are still a lot of things for me to learn. Um, if I use a word to describe Chinese culture, I would say attractive or impressive. Because when I was traveling to New Zealand, I couldn't wait to share my culture, culture to them. I performed um, Sichuan opera and Peking opera things. They were so impressed and they became really interested in Chinese traditional yeah. culture. I believe many foreigners would be interested in different like type of Chinese traditional culture. Is that right? 
Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. This is what you're saying. It's very right. Well, while you keep your culture back to the roots, you represent your culture, it's also important for your culture to go out to the yes. world mm -hmm. and we to let more people understand it and enjoy its beauty. And I think that yeah. China is working really hard in that direction right now. And we're seeing great results, I must say, that we're really impressed. For example, in Confucius Institutes, yep. we see this kind of performances mm -hmm. or just the simple calligraphy art. For Chinese people, it's like, you know, it's just the basic skill. And everyone yeah. is just so odd. It's so it's such a surprising and, and, experience. And sometimes we we were discussing earlier, sometimes it's when you leave your own country, then okay. you realize, you start cherishing what is special. Yeah, you become an ambassador of yes. your country and of your culture. Yes. That's when you really start to appreciate your own culture, your own roots. And yes. this is the same for me. Yes. Because Enoch and I, we both studied abroad, so yeah. we don't really understand this, this experience. Yeah, it's also very important to represent your country very well and also share your culture with other people, because now in Beijing, for example, in international universities in Beijing, there are so many cultures, right? For example, I, I know that in my country, Ethiopia, they teach Amharic language in Beijing foreign university. Oh. Yeah, and there are, I've met so many Chinese people who fluently speak Amharic. <laughs> <laughs> it must be so surprising. Yeah, I was surprised then they can even dance Better than wow. me. <laughs> <laughs> they can make Power good coffee yeah. and Power it's good, it's good yeah. to represent your country and also share it, respect other cultures and share yeah. your culture. Yeah. So, so we got a very interesting comment. I'm not going to name the country that this person is from, but then the person say um, he, uh, he or she is very uh, jealous and envy of the Chinese civilization because it's been passed on. But for where this person is from, sometimes they're vulnerable cultures that are disappearing. So the person uh, uses the word hashtag AskPi to ask, you know, are there any disappearing civilizations that deserve our attention? What do you think, Pi? Yes, these civilizations include indigenous cultures, minority cultures, traditional crafts, and more. The disappearance of these civilizations will lead to a reduction in cultural diversity, and the loss of human cultural heritage and history is irreversible. We're ending the show very, very soon, but uh, keep the comments and questions coming on CGTM website and mobile app, as well as all our social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, Douyin, WeChat, Weibo, BDBD, and Yang Shipping as well. So. Um, so, Bermat, when I was talking to you earlier, I was very shocked that Ethiopia has so many different ethnic groups and nationalities as well. Can you tell yeah, us Yeah, we have 81, 81. nationalities <gasps> and... Wow. <laughs> wow. This is impressive, <laughs> right? I, I have the same. I thought 56 <laughs> was a lot. It was enough. And then you're telling me it's 81. 81. So, so, so my question is, how do you preserve... So, going to what Pai mentioned, right? Yeah. How do you preserve this, you know, heritage? How does it not become history yeah, and yeah. pass on? It's very important to preserve it. One thing is there is one essence that holds the whole country together, especially the language our hospitality and most, most people are also, also eager not only to uh, learn from others but to, uh, to accept them, mm. make them their friends and also be with them. So there are more normally more than five uh, big nationalities but close, close to 81 and they have their own language and their own culture. One important thing about dying cultures is that, for example, this Amharic language yep. came from a language called Ge'ez. Mm. This Ge'ez language is now not spoken f widely, but it is usually used in the literatures. So Amharic language, when Ge'ez language is dying, from the Ge'ez language came out a language oh. called Amharic. So, so it evolves. It evolves. Language yeah. evolves. So dying culture is very sad. We need to preserve it, but culture also evolves. But you can bring the language to one of the Chinese universities and then you have a lot of students. <laughs> lots, of, yeah. <laughs> lots of universities are studying this Ge'ez language. In oh. Germany, they have very big institution because back in the days, our country was a very big civilization, the Aksumite Empire, and yep. they, studied, they studied this language because they have so many documents written. Of course, of course. So this is a great extension to another question that I just gotten. So thank you for the viewers who were listening and just gave us another comment. So they, they were asking about, you know, you know when, when we go into, and I love this viewer because it really Im immerses into the environment of us being a spacecraft and going to ci space civilization. So what should we pay attention to regarding about civilization on your planet, Pi, 
when we go there. Humans need to respect and protect the local environment and ecosystem on Alpha Planet, observe local laws and regulations, respect and protect the potential extraterrestrial civilization and life, in order to promote peaceful coexistence and mutual development between humans and our civilization. Hmm. Thank you so much, Pai. Uh, though, these aren't actually too far from us, right? I mean, yes, not everyone, unfortunately, have the opportunity to go <laughs> to introduce Earth <laughs> civilization to space, yes. to alpha planets, but we, a lot of times, you know, encounter new environment, new culture. So maybe we can end this episode by giving some suggestion and advice on to the people who, you know, might have the opportunity to come to China or yes. might have the opportunity to travel around the world. Um, you know, what would you say, what, what recommendation would you give to them? Kate, do you want to go first? Yes. Difficult so, question. Yeah, it's really a difficult one. So I was hoping to listen to everyone, but if I can okay. go first. <laughs> Anyone want to go first? <laughs> all right. So I, I can start. Yep. Uh, I think, first of all, wherever we go, yep. we need to respect that cultures. Yep. We need to respect their yeah. food, yeah. drinks, even though, like, if you don't like that the taste of that food or drinks, you know, we need to respect because we don't know what's yeah. the behind of it. That's why we need to respect it. On the other hand, I think we should be open mind. We should mm. be open. For example, I'm from Turkey. I just came to China. I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to travel. I'm trying to meet new people. I'm respecting their culture. Yeah, I'm yeah. respecting their food. Certainly. Mm. So that's why I think uh, when you go to abroad, like wherever you go, it doesn't matter. You need to respect. You need to try as much as you can because cultural heritage is really important to develop your skills, mm. to look at the situation from different kind of view. So that's why we need to be open, we need to try as much as, and we need respect. Yeah. Mm. And respect, very I, respect. I really agree with Mustafa. This is, a, this is what I thought of talking about. And I think another important mindset and attitude to have is a peaceful mind and peaceful heart. Mm. So as soon as you go to the other planet, I think that uh, you should respect the peace and the laws of that country, right? Exactly. And yep. bring only peace with you, with your mentality, yep. with your culture, mm. right? And yes. and to coexist in this world in harmony and peace. I mm. think these are two keywords for me. There's harmony no right and wrong from that yeah, perspective. No black so, and white. Yeah, so, so it's not about imposing what you know onto someone else's yes. culture. But this respect is about trying to understand yes. from yeah. the other people's perspective. Right. Yeah. When right. we are together, we are more stronger. Yeah. Yes. 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 Together experiencing, we are Experiencing, trying to be open and experiencing other people's perspective. For example, you can, a culture as a language, a culture as a food, a cultural way of dressing, a culture as so many things. So trying to, to be eager and open-minded to experience these things without any stereotype is yeah. very, very important. So treating it as an adventure, an experience, an experience. to try yeah. something new. Yeah. Right. I think it's exactly. very important to be curious, not to have a lot of stereotype and Please. prejudices, mm -hmm. and go with questions. Yep. And in order to understand another planet or another civilization, you can ask a question, why? Mm. For, to understand this person better, but not to make your conclusions on the information that you know not going to this country, before going to this country, because this is a bad way of understanding the way of life, the way of how things are there, mm. right? So I think that you should really have, as I said, an open heart and an open mind. Be curious, uh, no prejudices, no stereotypes. And, and this yeah. means no assumption, right? Don't go with an assumption. Free assumption, right? Free assumption. You can have assumptions after you learn, after mm. you understand. But before you even understand, how can you have these conclusions made in your mind? Excellent. Mm -hmm. Same way. I think we should see more possibilities between culture mm -hmm. because just as what we did, we, we communicate and we see the similarities and differences between our culture and we are so interested in each other's culture. Mm -hmm. If we don't communicate, like we m might have like misunderstanding. So this is really important f to communicate with another culture, to understand them and to get into them. Yeah. So going back, the power of language is exactly. so important, right? Open doors. Communication, exactly. right? Communication. Language, at, at this point, language doesn't really matter as much. Your willingness and your openness to communicate, yep. yes. to talk about things and decide them in a peaceful, harmonious way, because this is what is really called win-win cooperation for everyone, yes. Yes. for our big planet it and big family. Breaks down the barriers. Yeah, exactly. Breaks down barriers. Yeah. Excellent. Great. So, so I'm hearing that Pi might have an announcement for us. <laughs> May I have your attention, please? You may. This is a final call for <laughs> flight POY002. 
All passengers should now proceed to the boarding gate. The boarding gate is about to close. Passengers who have not yet boarded the flight should do so immediately. So this is it. Um, right. So we're wrapping up uh, the entire episode. Oh. We need to get a lot of Our captain is all ready. Oh, the captain. Right? Yeah, captain, you're ready. Captain, you're ready. Captain, you're ready. Captain, you're ready. Captain, Do you all have your tickets? Oh, yeah. we all have our tickets, captain. <laughs> get ready, captain. You look so professional. I know, right? I, I, I like this. I like this. Um, I can get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> you're already professional. Yes. So thank you so much. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaker. <laughs> <laughs> so, so to wrap up, um, we had two wonderful uh, episodes talking about culture. But I think one thing that I learned from the last round of sharing is that in order to accept a new civilization, a new culture, uh, whether we're on Earth or whether we're in the outer space, it's, it's important to respect, it's important to appreciate, yep. uh, it's important to share as well, um, our differences, yeah. yes. uh, so that we can celebrate and we can embrace our differences. And then we Very can live true. in harmony, as you mentioned. Um, there is no such thing as universal value, yes. but exactly. there is a shared value. Mm -hmm. And once we share our value, we can celebrate as one together. Yes. Um, so this has been a very, very exciting journey. Um, if you want to know um, how did our journey go, please do follow us on all of our platform, including CGTN website, mobile app, and all of our social media platform. Leave questions and comments on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, uh, TikTok, Douyin, WeChat, uh, Weibo, Bilibili, and Yang Shiping as well. So I was told by Pi, if you want us to safely come back to Earth, do share, like, and comment as much as you can. So um, maybe uh, the next time when we see each other um, depends on your likes and comment. That's what I heard. Um, uh -oh. so, <laughs> <laughs> so you guys ready? Yeah. 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 So let's say bye to the audience. We're going to get to uh, the spacecraft. I'll see you next time. Hey. Goodbye. Bye. 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 See you next time. See you next time.